everyone, my name is Roshni and welcome to Betty Grew Up. This channel is all about taking control of your mental health. I cannot believe it's been another month already and I honestly just feel so so much better in terms of mental health and I finally have thrown myself back into the world of personal development so I feel like I'm really in a good place and I have a lot of important lessons that I wanted to share with you so let's just get to it so the first lesson that I wanted to talk about is discomfort and being uncomfortable it is completely okay to be uncomfortable discomfort is honestly what we need to grow and um, I love psychoanalysis I studied it in college and there's someone called Donald Winnicott who's a British psychoanalyst he basically developed the concept of the good enough parent or the good enough mother if there is someone that is doing every little thing for you and is perfect essentially like you know has breakfast on the table every single day never makes a mistake never makes you late to practice, all these different things, then you basically become so comfortable with this perfect person who's just taking care of your every single need that you will never want to leave that place. You will never want to grow. You won't want to go out on your own. You won't want to go out to college because you are so enamored with this person that is just dealing with life for you essentially. You don't have to do anything on your own. You don't have to go out on your own. And that is not really what we want. That's not what a healthy parent should want for their child. They shouldn't want their child to be crippled and to have to stay at home. They should want their child to be comfortable, you know, taking risks and making decisions and deciding what they want in life and really going after it. So in order for a child to want to do that, their parent needs to be good enough, which means that, you know, they're definitely taking care of their basic needs. They're there for emotional support. They're there for, you know, comfort and love and all these beautiful things. Um, but at the same time they're not doing every single thing for this kid you know it might look like setting a really strict budget for your kids or making your kids pay for things on their own you, you know saying no every once in a while or limiting them in different ways when it comes to um, social standards or having really high you know expectations out of them and all of that is pushing that child to do more and to achieve more but in some ways by the end of their 18 years living with their parent, they should be kind of uncomfortable. They should be ready to leave. They should say, you know what, I'm done being looked after, I'm done being taken care of, I'm ready to do this on my own. And whether that's fully true or not, they should want to at least feel that they are ready to take on that level of independence so that they at least um, feel that they will be capable to learn how to do so in the future, if that makes sense. Everything from my style to my outlook on life has changed and that's been because I've allowed myself to just bulldoze through the discomfort and accept it as a part of life and not get defeated by it. I encourage you to go after your dreams to make yourself uncomfortable and if you have goals, if you have, you know, anything you want to do that you haven't done before, there's not a shadow of a doubt that at some point you're going to be uncomfortable or that you're going to face some discomfort but honestly it's going to be so so worth it and out of those really hard times you are going to grow and you are going to blossom so much so whatever that looks like for you right now whatever situation or trial is coming up for you right now just accept it lean into it and just bulldoze right through it you can deal with this right now you're gonna feel so much better and be a better person because of it this next one is huge and I'm not gonna lie it's something that I really struggle with but that's why I thought it was so important to talk about today and that is just showing up and being present now for someone who has a lot of mental health issues like myself I have general anxiety social anxiety depression and panic disorder so for anyone else out there who deals with mental health illnesses no matter what they look like it can be crippling a lot of the time it can be exhausting there's so many different things that we're all spreading our time across and you know we can run ourselves really thin I have learned to just give myself some slack when it comes to all of the extra things I'm doing. If you absolutely have to go to work and you cannot miss a day of work, but you also have all these other things and you know, you're gonna go out to dinner or go to this extra business meeting, there's a million things that you could be doing that would make you more productive. But if your mental health is getting to you, then you need to put that first and say, okay, I absolutely have to go to work today. That's the one thing I cannot miss, but I'm letting myself off the hook for every other thing. And uh, you might have seen my habit tracker video if you are a person who bullet journals go check that out because I talk about how I use my habit tracker to schedule in or deal with an impromptu self-care day and that tactic has also helped me a lot and taken a lot of the pressure off of myself to 
perform at 100% in all these different things that I'm doing. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of Brooke Castillo, but I recently started listening to her podcast and I absolutely love her. Um, I believe her podcast is called The Life Coach School and she actually says that you should use 80% of your energy to master your mind and to handle your thoughts and then the other 20% is just, you know, sheer hard work and dedication and all of that good stuff. At first I kind of heard that and I thought it was a little bit shocking, but honestly I've come to completely agree with that because I've realized over the last number of months how many hours I've wasted just scrambling here and there saying oh I need to make my website look better oh I need to tweak this and worry about these captions and spend all this time doing all these detailed things and yes that all has a place and that's all good but when my main goal and my main purpose was to get views and I was too scared to promote myself. Everything else is just busy work. I'm not getting to the bottom line. And I knew that and I knew that I was sabotaging myself, but it was so hard to pull myself out of that cycle, especially because you're masking it with, oh, this is productive. Oh, this needs to look better. This one thing that I, you know, worked on a while ago needs tweaking. And you kind of lose yourself in these different things and completely avoid the major things that you need to be focused on. I think that if I had instead taken taken a few weeks, taken an hour a day, taken something like that to just work on myself and take a time out and say, okay, my thoughts are going everywhere. I'm having all these crazy thought flurries as Brooke calls them. And I need to get control of myself, pick a few things that I'm working on and just focus on those one at a time. Because if I don't, this is not gonna lead me anywhere good. And if I had done that, I would probably be a lot further than I really am. But instead I was too, scared that I would waste time dealing with my thoughts and dealing with my anxiety and instead decided to just waste the same time but waste even more of it by doing productive but not productive busy work, still not getting any results out of it and just feeling like, oh, I'm busy but then giving myself anxiety because I'm working so hard and not seeing results. Do you see how all these like thoughts end up being a cycle that end up just kind of being like these sabotaging patterns? It's so easy to lose yourself and to lose sight of yourself within these larger cycles, but if you can just pull back a little bit, and I promise you, no, no matter how much you think it's a waste of time, it honestly is going to be worth it to get control of your thoughts, even if you want to take a week off, a, an hour a day, like I said earlier. Just take that time and really invest it in yourself, because if you are coming to work or coming to your desk or coming to the gym, wherever you are, wherever you need to focus with a clear mind and just kind of a direct goal of what you're working on that day you not only are going to leave feeling better but you're going to do better in the time that you are there and you're going to see better results and that is just hands down something that I need to constantly focus on and work on the final thing that I wanted to talk about is more difficult and it hits home for sure but it is the idea that we're not running away from failure necessarily. We are running away from the shame associated with it. Whether it's having a perfect Instagram page or whether it's hiding all of your problems from, you know, however you present yourself online. Like whatever the, the issue is, we all feel like we need to have a little bit of a shield, a little bit of an armor so that a person doesn't know exactly what is going on with us. And I, the absolute, like, debilitating feeling of just being so shameful, of feeling like you are alone, of feeling like no one could possibly understand, of feeling judged. Um, all these aspects of shame are so rooted in who we are and in how we see ourselves. And those cuts go so deep. Like those are like your deepest triggers, the deepest most hurtful things that a person could say to you would revolve around the same things that give you a sense of shame. Good to know, but it's like, okay, well, now that I know that I am terrified of being ashamed, what does that mean? Well, it means A, you need to kind of get a list or get an, a sense of what it is that gives you shame. What is it? Is it, you know, your body? Is it food related? Is it finances? Whatever gives you that source of shame, you really need to ask yourself, why do I feel like I need this? Why do I need the perfect body? Why do I need a PhD? Well, to do it, no matter what it is, there's always this kind of level of this, this role that our egos play into it and that's what you need to be aware of and you need to ask yourself, am I just forcing myself to do this PhD and go to all these classes and write, you know, these theses and 
it's just because of what other people think of me because if that's true then fulfilling that phd isn't going to be what gets you to the next level that's not going to be what gets you that happiness that you're looking for it's going to be that official stamp of approval from your peers or from your family members and the only way that you are going to achieve that is telling yourself that their opinion at the end of the day doesn't matter and finding that sense of wholeness and safety in your own decisions and in who you are and it's a huge leap of faith because at some point you're going to be wrong at some point something's going to go wrong our lives are never going to go perfectly no matter what decisions we make they're never going to always fully pan out perfectly so you have to be willing to deal with the failures or deal with the risks of whatever decisions you're making and if you're not ready you're just going to end up being resentful towards your family or towards the people that you feel like are pushing you in that direction you have to learn how to stand up on your own feet in terms of the decisions that you're making and a lot of that comes with finding your why and finding out where the role of shame plays into it if you feel like any time that you're not being productive, that you're feeling guilty, any time that you're not at the gym, you're feeling guilty, any time that you enjoy yourself and have a meal and don't count calories, you feel guilty, that's probably because there is a level of shame to that activity that you're doing. So that's something that you definitely need to just be aware of and, you know, try and kind of find a try and kind of detect that or kind of have a bell in your head go off and say, oh, you know, I that was a shame thought. That was a shameful thought. And um, another final point that I want to make in this section is that Brene Brown talks about how shame cannot survive being spoken. So if there is something, you were ashamed of something that even if it happened 10, 20 years ago and you're just holding on to it, now is the time to let it go. Leave your shame stories at your hashtag shame chronicles in the comments below and just let those stories fly. Who cares? We all have embarrassing moments. We've, we've all probably done things that we regret and we're honestly probably better people because of it. So own that. Own your story and don't let the shame control you. You can talk shame out of your system, out of your life, and just allow yourself to explore that side of yourself because shame is dark, deep, scary for sure. But what's scarier is losing your life to making fear-based decisions and not taking control because of how afraid you are to feel that sense of shame. Of course, don't forget to leave me the lessons that you've learned in September down below in the comments. If you want to follow me or get in touch with me, please go ahead and follow me at any of these platforms. And I love you again. Happy healing.